Thank you, Henry. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, most of all, because I regard the topic as surpassingly important. The struggle to learn from our past is nearly as old as history itself. Thucydides said that he would be content if my history be judged useful by those who desire an exact knowledge of the past as an aid to understanding the future. So my remarks are aimed at providing a little bit of context as to why this issue is important. And I think that most of you here today either make policy, oversee those who make policy, or write about those who make policy. Advancing good policy analysis is in our common interest. It's said that there is a reason for everything, and that usually that reason is physics. But even former Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, who has both uh, degrees in physics and history, said that for most people, their primary frame of reference in analysis is historical. It's not political science, it's not economics, it's not sociology, it's what happened in the past and how does that inform me about what might happen in the future. That makes understanding the past vitally important, especially to policymakers. It's going to happen in any event, so the analysis should be rigorous and accurate and informed by the facts. And that means, ultimately, that there must be some level of declassification. Henry alluded to a project that um, I had worked on under his aegis. And I'd like, actually, to give just two specific examples as to why historical analysis can be so important to policymaking. The first was um, a study of how the intelligence policy communities work together on eliminating Libya's nuclear and chemical weapons programs. Um, the lessons learned from that, I thought, were deeply important. And even though I had worked on the project in government, on the National Security Council staff, I learned a lot by talking to the people, other people who had participated in the project. And Steve Kappas's understanding of um, what he called contact and um, momentum, which was his effectively keeping at the Libyans regardless of set setbacks. By the way, contact and momentum in this case might be a lot like what a pulling guard inflicts on a linebacker. But he, he, was, he stuck with it uh, despite some ups and downs. My guess is that the people who were confronted with North Korea's nuclear program could probably learn some things from Steve, and that therefore um, the understanding of that project would be helpful. Richard Law attended the six party talks together, and we sat across the table uh, from people who I believe had, at least some of them, had participated in effectively every single enga diplomatic engagement between the United States and the DPRK whereas our delegation was much less experienced. Now, there were people who could recall some of that history, but understanding that history was vitally important to understanding where those North Koreans wanted to go. Um, I would cite a prospective project, just to give you another example of this, to, as to how important this is. Um, a scholar who came through the Belfer Center coined a phrase that resonated deeply with me. Um, she called it the pathologies of repression. And the idea is that certain um, governments undertake policies because of their nature that actually are antithetical to their own self-interests. Probably the, the largest example of that might be Saddam Hussein managing to convince everyone in the world that he hadn't given up his WMD programs, even though he largely had. Mm -hmm. um, Sub-examples of that would be in, in the Libya case. Uh, some of the people who had been told to cooperate with American uh, officials there in the elimination of those programs suspected that this was somehow a loyalty test or a trick and were therefore very reluctant to talk about these things. Well, in this, um, in, I hope that with this other scholar, we can 
categorize, analyze, and then come to some idea as to how to deal with the pathologies of repression in the context of eliminating um, weapons of mass destruction programs. I think that is, would be a, a, if we manage to do it, a significant contribution to advancing public policy going forward. And of course, we're going to have to rely on at least some candor um, with respect to past actions. So that's my experience in this realm. Thank you.